All right, everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh, artificial intelligence hates me. And that's good company. That's demons. Artificial intelligence is demons. And you po people talking to watch your face and Siri. Hey, demon, can you tell me some stuff? Can, can you share with me some facts? Quit talking to devils, man. Okay? I'm telling you, AI is demons. And we have them coming in at a higher level on that quantum level computing. And uh, Jordy Rose talks about that from Canada and their uh, wickedness. Watch out for that stuff, guys. Don't trust. Don't trust AI. Don't trust this stuff. It's all a slow entry to the death knell. And we don't want any part of that. We don't have anything to do with death. Now, we live in this world and we utilize their systems. But don't be in conversation with demons, okay? Find your information some other way, not live interaction, all right? Man, that's just like going to the Witch of Endor, King Saul. Don't do that. And what was Saul wanting? Questions answered? Because the Lord quit talking to him. The Lord wouldn't give him answers, so he went to the devil. And I'm going to encourage you not to do that, okay? But anyway, they, AI just hates us. They're not still not letting me share stuff. And uh, it's because they know what time it is. We know what time it is. And they know what time it is. Vondo says, man, we encourage you to read 10 to 20 chapters in your Bible every day. All you believers. There's Calvinists who do that. There's Methodists who do that. Uh, there's Satanists who do that. And reading your Bible is nothing, folks, unless you're born again. You must be born again. And how, how are you done that? How, how are you changed from a creation, a creature that's going to hell? And that's everybody. That's our default. All human beings are going to hell. How do you change that status from that creature to being a new creature, a new creation, where old things have passed away and all things have become new? Well, you place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work for you. He came here to die on a cross for you so you could be freed from yourself, from sin, from eternal punishment. From hell, from God, his wrath. You know, nobody wants to face the wrath of God. God saves us from his wrath, and he saves us unto his salvation, his sanctification, his glorification. And that's where we're all headed. How do you do that? How, how does one go from being a creature of the night, a sinner on his way to hell, to being gloriously saved? You believe. You believe that Jesus did this for you. You have the Bible. You don't hate the Bible. You're not an atheist. You change all your thinking to come around to Jesus is God. And Jesus left heaven. God left heaven to come here to die in my place because righteousness and justice required that a human die for humans. And I'm human and I did my own sinning. I did enough share. One sin keeps me out of heaven because heaven's a place for perfect people. So just don't, don't compare yourself to other bad folks and think you're good. One sin makes you a hellion forever. And it started with our father, Adam. He sinned and he was a hellion. And so he gave forth, gave birth, gave life unto all hellions. Everybody who's human, you're a hellion. You're on your way to hell, no matter how good you are. No matter how you jump through the hoops and perform like a good little circus monkey, you're going to hell. And you must believe the preacher's word who says this. Because God sends preachers that men might be saved. We proclaim his righteousness. And the only way to be saved is believe there's a God. Believe his name is Jesus. Believe he came in the flesh. And he lived a perfect 33 and a half years. And then died on a cross in your place. And while on the cross, the father, the judge, put all the sin of humanity up on him. And it was burnt up in him as a sacrifice. And he took care of the sin issue. And now you're freed from the sin issue. Jesus Christ has taken care of that for you. He paid the price for all man's sins with his own blood. Do you believe that? If you'll believe that story, place your faith in the middle of it. Hand Jesus the, the paintbrush and say, paint my heart, paint my soul, paint me with your righteousness, paint me with your blood. And that's by believing. 
in the death, burial, and resurrection. And Jesus will come in. He will turn your wicked heart into a righteous one. You're no longer considered a sinner, but now a saint, a believer, the bride of Christ, the body of Christ. And he turns us into a new creation at what? Your simple belief, your honest belief, your sincere belief in your need for a Savior. And that Jesus is him. Death, burial, and resurrection. That covers it all. All right. Praise God. Be saved. Read that Bible. 10 to 20 chapters every day. And please support Sean Mitchell. Vonda always puts his link up here. Please support that man. He's a man of God. The man of God. One of the two witnesses who's going to be here three and a half years after we've been raptured. Please support him. I am begging you to support the guy. Uh, Vonda's put up this morning's Bible study right here. Uh, we're still going through the book of Philippians. I believe it'll bless your soul. Listen up, listen up with uh, spiritual ears. Hear what the Spirit's saying. Heather says, amen, the only good in me is Jesus' righteousness. Oh, amen, amen. That reminds me. Greg Jackson is back at it, guys. He keeps defending his foolishness. He keeps defending. There's no better gift than God, so why are you expecting gifts? Um, that's true. But the reason we're expecting gifts is because God said there would be some on the other side. We believe the Bible. We read that in a verse last night in one of the Bible codes. There in Revelation 11. God rewarding his servants. God rewarding his prophets. That's you and me, right? You're going to reward us. And you know what he said today? What does... Uh, Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, 8 say. Now, when you hear 4, 8 these days, what are you thinking of? The eclipse that happens on 4, 8, April 8th, God's sign of judgment, God's sign of uh, this is the end, this is it. Tyvon said, had some spiritual warfare in my dreams, or nightmares. Why does it happen at 3 or 4? That's called the devil's witching hour. That's when, that's when the witches believe that. <clears throat> That's when they start casting spells. That's when they start trying to penetrate the Christians' homes. And so we just pray against them. Uh, the witching hour, devil's hours, 3 or 4 a.m. Amen, bro. Praise God. Okay, check this verse out. This is where we get the crown of righteousness. Now, today, he said, Greg Jackson said, I believe that every believer gets the crown of righteousness. Because, you know, it's the righteousness of Christ in us. He just rewrote the Bible, guys. He just changed what the Holy Spirit has in the Scriptures. The Holy Spirit says that not everybody is going to get the crown of righteousness, but only those who are anticipating and excited about the rapture, about seeing Jesus Christ. They're the ones who's going to get the crown of righteousness. Let's see what Paul has to say about it. Paul's about to get his head cut off. He's writing to his buddy Timothy. We mentioned him this morning in today's sermon, okay? Timothy was a godly man. He wasn't a great, extraordinary, all miracle worker. He wasn't an apostle. He didn't see the resurrected Jesus. That's what makes a person an apostle. But he was a faithful servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul could trust in him to do whatever God wanted done. And he would follow through with it. He wouldn't quit. He wouldn't bail. Mark, John Mark, he was a quitter until he matured out of that. Timothy was faithful, 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 always. He can count on him. When I'm away from him, I can count on Timothy. So here's Paul dying in prison, about ready to get his head cut off, and he writes to Timothy. And 2 Timothy is the most personal letter that Paul ever writes concerning his heart, his attitudes, where he's at in the world. Okay? Let's look at 4 8. 2 Timothy 4 8. Uh, well, why don't we go ahead and. Um, Verse 6, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Vano's got it here, guys. And the time of my departure is at hand. Verse 7, I fought a good fight, I finished my course, and I've kept the faith. Boy, be able to say this. That was what this morning's sermon was about. Okay, Paul was always talking about that. Do the will of God, know the will of God, desire the will of God, hate your own will, put to death the flesh, put to death your own will bucket list and everything you're planning, get rid of it and just be alive under the Lord Jesus Christ and go with him step for step. And because I kept the faith, it says this. Now listen, 
I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. And because of this, and henceforth, because of this, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me at that day, the day of judgment, seat of Christ, the day of the rapture. But not to me only, but unto all of them that love his appearing. So Paul qualifies quantifies this verse with three things. He says, I fought a good fight, the fight of faith. I have finished my course, the will of God for me, what God called me to do. That's what we preached this morning. Listen to the message. If you haven't, Bono's got the link up here. And I have kept the faith. I haven't wavered in the faith. I haven't changed what I once thought, what God gave me. I was like, whew, I can't wait to see him. I can't either, buddy. There's a crown of righteousness laid up for me, not for me only, but for everybody who loves his glorious appearing. That's who gets the crown, Greg. Quit preaching your lies, you false teacher. One more time. And gets thousands of watches and hundreds of likes. Incredible. People are so stupid, man. They, they always follow the wrong guys, the pretty boys, and whatever else they like about these flavored up ones. The fact, oh, so I get to get saved and God doesn't expect nothing else out of me after that? Oh, I'm in, dude. Let me get some water here. We got some chemtrails flowing. Hey, man, let's go home already, says Kush. Hey, Amen. All right. So we also know that MM is 44, 13, 13, double rebellion, March Madness. Okay. That is all a ritual unto the Antichrist and always has been. Okay? The 17th of March will be Selection Day. That's a Sunday. It's always a Sunday where, you know, God gets the glory stolen from him with a shiny. The devil always props up a shiny. And here's a shiny. On the 17th of March will be Selection Day for the bracket. Bracketology, they call it. This is the 30th year of Bracketology on ESPN. Ritual, ritual. Why would anybody start something in 2004? Because they knew something was going to happen in 2024 or, two, you know, 2094, what, 1994. Why would they start it then? Because they know the ritual is coming through, coming to pass. Uh, George says, false teachers, they all start with truths and half-truths and drift on to lies. That, that's, that's the key. And that's what Paul was saying. I've kept the faith. I haven't drifted off into lies. I've kept the faith. I finished my course. I'm done. I've done everything God called me to do. My race. I ran my race. I have finished my race. I've kept the faith. And therefore, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, but not for me only, but for everybody that loves the glorious appearing of Jesus. You know what that means? The people who love the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ, they know their course. They run their course. They keep the faith. And they don't quit looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And there is a reward for that. I encourage you to get that reward, folks. Know the will of God, run the will of God, and don't quit and don't bail out with some new faith that is not of God. Amen. Great, great note there, George. Amen. Hey, there's a fr one fresh fire that fell today. Why don't we check that one out? It's very important, it's very important that the two witnesses are known. That's why we speak about the two witnesses. Get them out there. Sean is one of them. Get it out there. The Lord will bless and honor it. And these people need to know who the real teachers are as opposed to these false ones. Amen? Amen. All right. So let's open up this dude. Look at this dude. And the simplicity of it, guys. The awesomeness of it. All right, check it out. The two witnesses, very simple. The blue there in the very far corner, downward, says Sean. And the pink is Mitchell. The two witnesses, Sean Mitchell. Is that a tough one to figure out for anybody? Is this, is this going to blow your mind? You're going to stay awake tonight wondering what this is saying? The two witnesses, Sean Mitchell. All right, 
Let's look at the verses that are found inside here. I want you to know how plain God wants to make it for everybody. Makes it plain for us, and then we need to share it to make it plain for those in the uh, in the uh, tribulation. Okay? There goes my phone doing its thing again, man. It doesn't want to obey. All right. Here's what it says. The two witnesses, the skip for George's sake and everybody else, is 141-588. 141-588. And it's a New Testament one. Amen. The Aramaic. And it says Sean Mitchell. The two witnesses, Sean Mitchell. And here's that green verse you saw up there at the top. Romans 9.23. What? Yeah, Romans 9.23. The vessels of mercy which were prepared by God for glory. I mean, does that verse perfectly belong or what? The two witnesses, and then God says, the vessels of mercy which were prepared by God for glory. 9.23, Romans 6. Let's see. Romans is the sixth book, and then 9.23. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the other verses going through here, are Revelation 18, 7, what? What? There's that 718 again, Sean Mitchell. Anybody questioning? Anybody wondering what this code is talking about? Two witnesses, Sean Mitchell. Hmm. Here's what it says. Rome, Revelation 18, 7. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. This is talking about Babylon. And Sean will be preaching against Babylon. Sean will be here right after Babylon's head is cut off, the United States, and going to be preaching to folks and tell them what happened. Then he'll be hollering out every seal that's about to be broken. When it's going to happen, what to look for. Here's, here it goes. And then that sixth seal earthquake, that'll be the countdown. And Sean will be responsible, he and the other guy, for seeing millions go to heaven. Because that's what we see. Right after the sixth seal earthquake, we see all those souls dressed in white with palms in their hands, singing unto the Lord. They were the ones who had died in the sixth seal earthquake. It's going to be a bunch of them. And they will have listened to Sean holler out, you need Jesus, believe in the finished work of Yeshua. He's going to get with the leader head. We saw that last night, Netanyahu, the chief, and the chiefs, the head of the uh, synagogue, the head of the temple committee, all of those guys. Sean's going to get with him. He will have access. God will provide access for him to speak to these people. And he's going to speak and he's going to holler out these judgments that are coming. Here comes the second seal, first seal, Barack Obama. He'll, he'll be calling him out and calling him a liar and a fraud and a faggot and everything else that needs to be said as, as a true prophet would do it. And then he's going to call out the second seal, which is the red horse, and we see that in red last night. The, the, the red that he highlighted red was talking about naming these seals, calling out these seals, prophesying these seals before they happen because God's prophets always do that, and he sends his prophets to do that. Here goes this judgment. We had John 1,926 years ago telling us the 21 judgments of what's going to happen and what they look like, what they are. Now we have Sean and the other guy coming back. Sean means John. Remember studying that last night? We have Sean and the other guy coming back, and they're going to give detailed. It's happening right now. 25 minutes. You got 25 minutes. Okay, because they want people saved. They're going to learn God's timing. They're going to learn his clock. They're going to learn what day it is and what time it is on that clock. The day of the week. The day of the calendar. The day of the month. They're going to learn all those things, and now you got 20, 20 minutes, what you're standing here for. And he's going to be hollering out. And then the third seal, and the fourth seal, and the fifth seal, all those dead souls under the altar. And the sixth seal earthquake, that's going to be the doozy. And it's obvious that many will have come to the Lord Jesus Christ, have believed on him, and called out his name, Lord Jesus of Nazareth, save me. I need saving that doesn't mean he's going to keep them from dying. That means they're going to not have to go to hell. And he's going to save them during that six-seal earthquake. And Sean will be out there hollering out. 
And so here we got Revelation 18, 7 in this code. How much she has glorified herself. You saw the Super Bowl, right? You saw that race, right? Daytona 500. You got to see who the Grand Marshal was? The Rock. This is all a setup, guys. He is Barack Obama's voodoo doll. You know, Barack and The Rock, he's his voodoo doll, man. He is his spirit spirit dream catcher. He's collecting all the rewards to hand to him. Remember, that was Satan's job. Satan's job was to collect the praise in heaven and offer it to the Father, but he kept some in his pocket like Judas did because he was a liar and a thief from the beginning. He stole the glory from God, the praise from God, the worship from God to put it on himself, and that's Rock's job. But Rock doesn't want to keep it for himself. He's in his oaths and his promises, he has made his uh, statement unto Barack Obama. You are my king. You are my glory. You are everything to me. Now, everything right now in the script of the WWE is something else. He has, uh, he has scripted himself in as the bad guy, the heel. Okay? He was the Grand Marshal of the Daytona 500. He owns the football team, the uh, UFL. Okay, he owns those guys. They're in uh, starting to do practice here real soon. Okay, the schedule was just released this month for the games they're going to be playing. It, it's a conglomerate of the, the two groups getting together, the USFL and his group that he owned, the XFL, and now they have the UFL. Okay, this is all ritual. The Rocks, the Rocks movie, Black Adam, mocking the third Adam. Yeah, it's all that, guys. And you got to know this. You got to know this about what you're watching. The devil's going to put all his stuff in front of you for his glory. And it's not neutral and it's not, you know, just sitting there. And it could go up. It's purposeful to bring Satan the glory. Okay. So we got the rock being invited to be the grand marshal of this year's uh, Daytona 500. And he's the guy that used to say, gentlemen, start your engines. But now in today's world, we have to say drivers. Drivers, start your engines. And that's what he did. And they asked him, he was in a being interviewed, 15 minute interview. And uh, how, how's things going? What, what, what's going through your mind? He said, well, last night I drove past the track. And here's what he said. I drove past the track last night and I felt the mana. Okay, he's Hawaiian, Tahitian, the Islanders, Western Islanders, Western Pacific Islanders. Okay, and he said, I felt the mana when I drove past the track. You guys remember that a track is a round track. It goes around and around and around and collecting everybody screams every time their driver comes by. Woo! Woo! Yeah! And all the words that go out of their mouth concerning the driver and the other bad drivers and everything else. And ain't God getting zero glory. God ain't getting none of that. They're all worshiping the devil, and it's all on a round track, like a time clock, going around and around and around, and they're gathering, harvesting, and this is witch talk, witchcraft, wizards, and they know it works for them in the demonic world. And they're collecting the spirit energy from mankind that was meant for God. God, he gets all the glory, laud, honor, and praise, but not at the Daytona 500, even among Christians. God does not get the glory at the Daytona 500. And he said it sitting down in this interview before he was the Grand Marshal, before he said, drivers, start your engines. He says, I drove by the track last night and I felt the mana. And then he explains, mana is the spiritual energy and the healing power which can exist in places, objects, and persons. And Hawaiians, we believe that the mana may be gained or lost by actions. And Hawaiians and Tahitians believe that mana is both external and and internal. Demons. Hey Siri. Alexa. Mana. And he felt the energies he drove by. And Vano says the race goes counterclockwise to reverse time. Dude. Hello? Everybody clicking along there? Ritual after ritual, and the rock is at the head. He is at the head of racing because Daytona 500 is the, the biggest race of all the year. They, they do the best, the biggest first. And so they invite him in for that. He's in charge of Summer Football League. 
He's in charge of that. He's now writing the scripts and been given a big money portion to come back to WWE and to bring them back some money to write their scripts. And it's all about the family tree, baby, the bloodlines. Satanic, satanic, satanic. Obama, Obama, Obama. You can't get out of the Obama uh, curse, the Obama, uh, the Obama energy collecting, the Obama ritual out of anything that The Rock does. That's what his job is, and he loves it, man. And he's bringing glory, not to God, but to the mana, the energy. I felt the energy at this place. From all the past times, the races happened, and all the, all the demons that are in the stands, all the demons that are on that racetrack, and waiting to empower everybody who's offering over their glory, laud, honor, and praise to the devil, who's not saved. Now, those demons can influence the saved. They can, they can take those demons home in their car, these people who are walking away from God, not walking with God. And those demons can't possess these people, but they can be all around these people. These people invite them in their home. Hey, Alexa. As soon as you get Alexa in Siri, you in, you've invited that demon and all the others. It's a portal for demons into your house. Please hear the preacher and believe and repent and burn all your demonic stuff in your house and quit giving your glory, Lord, honor and praise to the mana, the energy that the rock, Barack can feel. Okay, quit that. Drivers, start your engines. See if I had another note on that. Oh, he says, they asked him, hey, uh, now that you're back in the W. W.E., we see you, you've written yourself back in as the villain. What about that? He said, being the villain is the greatest thing in the world. He's speaking for Barack Obama. He continues, it allows you to do and say things that you can't normally say. He's the voice of Barack Obama. Listen to what he writes himself into in these scripts, okay? That's what we're watching. Since you and I know who the Antichrist is and all these people, uptime, in time dreams, I don't know who the Antichrist is and I don't care. Well, God seems to care, man. He's given us over 150 Bible codes on this idiot. God cares. Why don't you care, you stupid retard? Guys, please get on the same page with the Lord Jesus Christ and where we are right now. Yeah, being the villain, it allows you to do and say things that you can't normally say. And the uh, gematria for driver start your engines is 325. I see a 55 in there. You give 3 plus 2 and 5. I see the 32 in there. That's the Freemasons. Amen. And I see the 5 in there, the Freemasons and the pentagram. Okay. And so forth. All right. Oh, Dwayne Johnson in Hebrew gematria is 261 or 216. Okay. That's how, that's how it rolls. Just go God's way. Start with the two and go from right to left. And you come around to 216. He represents Obama to the T. 216 is six times six times six. 216. Obama was born on the 216th day. It is the inverse. His birthday is 8-4. It's the inverse of 4-8. Four, 4-8 eight. Four, eight is the last of the, of the signals, and it's writing an Aleph across America, which is also an Alpha. And Barack Obama considers himself to be the Alpha of the world, the Alpha of the United States, the Black Alpha. And they're going to wipe him out eventually. But everything is paying homage unto him. And we know that that eclipse is coming for eight. And we know that 40 days later, we I've posted, I made a list of a bunch of stuff going on there. And my little bride, her birthday is 40 days later after the eclipse, which happens on 4-8. And 40 days later, she'll be 48. Now, that's just a note. That's just something I took away and understand but I know God puts people in our lives, puts people together whose numbers and names mean something for his glory, telling a story. I mean, Jesus means the salvation of Yah. You're not going to go with that or what? Yeshua? It has a meaning. It has a name. Okay? And it's very important to God. Joshua says, it's crazy that the Rock's best friend is Kevin Har, one of the top comedians, or you could say jester. Just like they see Satan to be. That's how it rolls, man.
And Rock does his best of being a jester. Every time he sits down for an interview, he's the good, happy, go lucky fella guy. And he broke the other night when he was in Vegas. He broke character. You know, he's come out there, he's the heel, oh, shut up, man, blah, 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 we're coming to destroy you. And then, boom, then he's out there knuckling all the little kids. Hey, man, the old man, hey, good to see you, high five. And just walking around being a nice guy. Villains will never do that. They always pull their shoulders and say, shut up, you know, walk on. And so it's just satanic what you're, you're in the middle of a mess. And why are we saying all that? Because the two days before the eclipse, WWE is going to be in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, the raptured church. The day before the 4-8 eclipse. Now, we know we don't believe that the rapture is going to happen on 4-8. We believe it's a sign, and we believe God's going to take us all the way into 8-R-2, which begins April 23rd. And it probably won't be right up front. God will probably take us a week or two into it before he even has his high watch dates because of Purim. Purim is, will be May 5th. Okay? So May 5th is Purim, which is 1313. That's, that's not the Purim celebration. That is what caused the celebration. The day that Haman rolled the dice and all the Jews were allowed to die on that day. That's May 5th. May 6th and 7th is perm itself the celebration all right man why don't we look at a couple older codes here praise god all righty let's bring it up yeah this one let's see if i can get it up here bam all right let's put this on tonight's bible study I hope you guys are doing well. Are you walking with the Lord? Are you walking with the Lord? Are you running the race with patience? Are you on schedule to finish the race at God's pace with him, walking with him? Don't let the shinies overtake you right now. Don't let the devil and his plan and his will and your old ways come back. He's going to bring your old ways back on you guys, making you believe that you have overcome them. We only overcome things by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and not loving our lives to the death. So be on the lookout for that. Because the devil hates you. The devil wants you destroyed. He wants you wiped out. He doesn't want the Lord getting any kind of power and glory in your life. And that's what we talked about today. The Holy Spirit's come in so we could have power to overcome. We could have power to have the victory. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And the Holy Spirit's leading us from inside. He's got the bright, bright, bright blowtorch of heaven inside of us. And most people keep a bushel basket under it or over it, keep it from being seen. And it's time for us to release those bushel baskets. Oh, they're not letting me send this, guys. All right. They're not letting me send stuff. I don't know why. All right. This is from August 29th, 2017. August 29th, 2017. It is God answered him. Oh, God answered. God answered. In him is everything and blessed be the Lord everlasting, the Lord of the universe. And you know, all these cartoons come in, Lord of the universe, almighty, whatever. And they, Jesus is the Lord of the universe. He's the creator of the universe. That is all of creation. That's what the universe means, all of creation. And he's the creator of that, and he's the Lord of that. Amen? Amen. And I'll get these posted tonight by God's grace, like I have been, these old school ones, but they won't let me share. I'll only be able to do it when I can share them. So pray that I'll be able to share it. I've not received any notification from them why I can't. I just can't. Can't do it on my phone. Can't do it here. All right. So here's what the Bible Code says. August 29th, 2017. The question asked by Sean in the code is, so who is Jesus? Who is Yeshua? And then God answered. And it starts with, God answered. In him is everything, and blessed be the Lord everlasting, the Lord of the universe. This skip is 643-659. 643 
659, 643, over half a million skips saying this many words. And the red line just goes from the bottom to the top, ne nearly to the bottom. And let's read the other passages. Isaiah 40, 28, have you not known? Have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fails not? Neither is he ever weary. Isn't that great? Our God doesn't get tired and wore out. And he never fails. That's why we want to walk with him in the yoke. Because he gets it right every time, man. There is no searching out of his understanding. He is so awesome. He's beyond us. And the code says this. God answered, in him is everything. Who's Yeshua? In him is everything. And blessed be the Lord everlasting, the Lord of the universe. Who is Jesus? He's the prince and the king. He's the creator. Hosea 11.9 For I am God and not a man, the Holy One that is in the midst of thee. Jesus is God. Amen? And not just simply a man. He was man, God cloaked in human flesh. That's who he still is. Now he's in glorified human flesh, just like you and I are going to be. Now, we don't know what that means, but we know when he appears, we'll know what it means. We'll be just like him, for we shall see him as he is. And I am so ready for that, dude. Okay? He's the Holy One in the midst of you. You will confess the Son, Jesus, Yeshua. It shall be the end of days that I will return. Let's see if there's anything else in here on the table itself that I need to mention. Shall be at the end of days, Hosea, Nehemiah 4.21. From the rising of the morning till the stars appeared, man. Amen. That's our God. Everlasting, creator, wonderful. And then behold, the lamp is his Messiah to the Father, the gift of light. Psalm 78, 35. And they remembered that God was their rock. Okay. That's why the rock's name is the rock. To stand in for Jesus, the Antichrist, to be the fill-in, to be the one who usurps the throne before the rock does. God is our rock. He is our high tower. The Bible said that way before the Antichrist showed up on the scene. And he's wanting to be the rock. Remember what the devil has done? Peter, you're the little rock and I'm the big rock, said Jesus. And upon this rock, I'll build my church. And everybody says he's saying, upon you, Peter, I will build my church. And then the Catholic Church comes along and says, we're that church. And God's kingdom has been built upon us. There's no salvation outside of our church. You guys know that the uh, Church of Christ say the same thing? There's no salvation outside of our church. you got to come to our church. And it has to say the Church of Christ on the name of the front of the building, or you can't be saved. <laughs> Quit, dude. Yep. Same thing as Catholicism, that when they protested, they just didn't protest far enough. They remain Catholic light. They have the same doctrines, and they're just as lost as any Catholic kneeling to an idol. These guys, the Church of Christ, their idols are 12 steps. Seven steps. They have seven steps that get you to salvation. That's an idol. There's no steps to get you to salvation. Jesus came to us, and you just believe. Isn't that great? So here we have... Psalm 78, 33, and they remembered that God was their rock. And that's what Sean will be down there preaching. I'm telling you guys, what I'm telling you concerning WWE and their script is the purest satanic Bible out there now. It's how Satan has continued on his thread, his conversation, where he is right now, what he wants to happen in ritual. Okay? And we're not just saying willy-nilly. I don't even watch the stuff. I just know it's real. I just know that that's, this is what's happening. The Lord has given me uh, the observation of that and the revelation of that. And Sean and I discuss it often. That's why I had the information I was sharing for you from The Rock at Daytona 500. 500, the number 500 is Antichrist. Hello? And what did we just read uh, about the daytime here? That's Daytona. The daytime 500, the daytime of Antichrist, the day of Antichrist. Psalm 78, 35, and they remembered that God was their rock and the most high God, their redeemer. That's what Sean's going to be teaching them. 
Get, get your eyes off this rock, this dome of the rock. Everything takes the place of Yeshua, the rock. The dome of the rock, the actor, the rock, the rock. Everything's a rock except Jesus. And Sean's going to be, no, 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 get your attention back on the rock. And remember that he is your rock and he is your redeemer. And they're going to believe, many will believe. And we'll see him in heaven quickly uh, at the sixth seal. We're going to start seeing him pour in, pour in, pour in. And finally, that sixth seal, they're going to gush in. Amen. All right, let's look at another one. Man, I love you guys. Sorry I couldn't get that link up there. It's, uh, that was September, uh, oh, that was August. This one's September 5th, 2017. September 5th, 2017, speaking of Obama. His chiefs will confess from the mouth that the DNA is 666. Every, you're not going to get the 666 uh, in the middle of the tribulation and not know what you're getting. For their rock is not our rock. Amen. Deuteronomy 32, 31. Uh, our rock is the rock. Their rock is not our rock. He's not as our rock. Donna says Yeshua is a contraction of uh, Yehoshua, Jehovah. Jesus saves. Jehovah saves. An action in Hebrew in the Old Testament then changes to Jesus in Greek in the New Testament, which means Savior, a noun. Amen. And she's, I just studied this in 2 Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, guys. That's our rock. Uh, for their rock is not as our rock. They have a whole different rock, baby. And we, uh, we got the rock. The very rock. And standing on the solid rock, right? On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. We stand on the rock. He's our foundation, man. Not the dome of the rock, not the rock, not the rock. Jesus, the rock, our rock. Their rock is not as our rock. Amen? Great word, dude. Great word, the flesh. Okay. His Chiefs Vondo has found the link, folks. Click on the link. And this whole Kansas City Chiefs thing was paying homage to the 10 kings who offered their allegiance, their lives, their people, their money, their facilities, their industry over to Barack Obama. And they hand it to him. They are his chiefs. They are his leaders, the 10 kings. That's what this Bible code is talking about. Let's check it out. Thank you very much, bro. Revelation 16, 13 to 14. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, Satan, out of the mouth of the beast, Barack Obama, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, Pope Francis. We're that close. You guys know how old that geezer is, right? 85, something like that. Lord's about to come right away, and that guy will last through seven years, and then Jesus will personally kill him. And we're going to watch him scared to death. He thinks he's the man now. Did you guys see him smack that woman's hand? A couple of years back, she tried to reach out and touch him. Oh, Papa. Oh, Papa. She grabs his, the hem of his garment and he slaps the crap out of her hand with anger in his face. Did y'all see that? That's who he is. And so I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and the mouth of the beast and the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils. Just like the ones in your house there, Siri, Alexa. They are spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to battle of that great day of God Almighty. When Jesus comes back, the second coming, the battle of Armageddon, the Ezekiel 38 war at the end of the seven year tribulation is when this happens. It's clear as a bell when you know the players. God told us the players. Oh, that just that doesn't mean crap to me. Well, it does to God. You can go with that idiot retard over there on uptime, or you can go with Jesus. What you going to do? It needs to mean something to you. Everything in this Bible code needs to mean something to you. Because God's telling you a story. You've been blessed with this, my man, my honey bunny. God loves you. Ezekiel 14, 3. These men have set up their idols. Who? The chiefs. They have set up these idols in their heart, and they put stumbling blocks of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired at all by these idiots, God says? Here was the main term. That skip was sick, 
uh, 168, 351. What? 153 backwards. And 168. Hmm. Very in important. And so here is the, the main code. Let's read that. His chiefs will confess from the mouth that the DNA is 666. Everybody's going to know it at mid-trib. It's not just guessing. Everybody's trying to say that this thing they did back in 2020 and, oh, that's the mark of the beast. It's a DNA rewriter and blah, 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 blah. Now, okay, but it's not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is going to be obvious. Everybody will know it's to pay allegiance to Satan, to Lucifer instead of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because it will have been whittled down to those two only because Barack Obama won't let any other gods be worshipped but himself. And there's going to be one group who's like, not us, man. We, we know there's only Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So it will have been whittled down to two, and they're going to have everybody make the decision. Guys, we're taking this mark of the beast. Our allegiance is to Satan. Our number is 666, Barack Obama. He's our commander. We are his chiefs, and we are getting this marker of the beast, this genetic marker which will turn you into a beast from which you can never be saved, just like the angel preached it, the everlasting gospel. And the terms here are the frogs, the spirits, the Nephilim. All of them are going to be his chiefs. His chiefs are going to be human and non-human. His chiefs are going to be human, demonic, Nephilim, giants. They're all going to be at his beckoning. Because Satan is inside of Barack Obama at this time, at the mid-trib, three and a half years after we are raptured. Uh, the mark is literally, you can't buy or sell. We can buy and sell right now. That's it. That's it. But we can't make posts on Facebook. Okay. Thank you, Kush. Good one. I, I need to find a find a, one of your memes for that. The satanic not being able to post a post in Facebook. Okay. Uh, so what do we got here? We got the frogs, the spirits, the Nephilim, an army arrayed for war. This is going to be at the Ezekiel 38 war, the Battle of Armageddon, the very last war when Jesus comes back and kills them. All the chiefs are there, and they all are loaded with the DNA of the devil in them, okay? And there's your list. The frogs are what? The aliens, okay? The frogs are the space aliens. They look like frogs, right? The little gray men? The frogs, the spirits, that's the demons, and the Nephilim are the giants in which the demons dwell, Okay, the whole army is here arrayed for war. The beast is even there, standing in the house of Jehovah. What they believe to be the house of Jehovah, they call it the house of Jehovah. Jehovah, here comes that 666 idol of Barack Obama, which is animated AI and standing in the holy place, the abomination of desolation. The time of 666 is before me, the abomination from the sun, Barack on the throne. And all this will start, guys, all this will start, this whole army, the, the frogs, the aliens, the spirits, the Nephilim is going to start right at the rapture. We're going to have it all introduced, and then they're going to be talking 666, and they're going to be talking their faithfulness to Obama and their allegiance, and, and we're so loyal to him, and blah, blah, blah. And all these groups are going to be saying that at the time Obama walks in and declares himself to be God, and for the next three and a half years, they will all be singing his praises. Glory, Lord, honored, we serve the devil, we worship Satan. We are Satanists, and they're going to be utilizing all of Satan's um, signals, all his signatures all of his signs. And the Satanists do that now. All right, man. What verse did we not read here? Um, we read them all. The time of 666 is before me, the abomination from the sun. That's when he walks into the temple, declares himself to be God, and requires that everybody get this 666, and they're all going to know it's from Satan. And the Nephilim will be promoting it, The aliens will be promoting it. The spirits will be promoting it. You know, the AI spirits that are inside machines. And then the beast will be promoting it. The Nephilim will be promoting it. All right. Let's look at another one. All right, just click on the left. Thank you, Vondo, for getting this fired up. 
we're going to click to the left and that should advance us to the next one that we're going to do. Click on that picture, that gray picture. This one is from September 6, 2017. We're getting closer and closer to the first time that eclipse came through on the 21st of, uh, well, it had already come through. Uh, the eclipse had already come through on August 21st, and now we're waiting on the Revelation 12 sign when God gave us this code. Okay, this is in between. This is very important. Listen how important this code is concerning the timing of when it all happened. Okay? Hurricane Irma in the Book of Psalms. Hurricane Irma, what was that? Only the largest hurricane category 5 that ever happened until two years later when Dorian came by. In the entire history of hurricanes, Irma was the monster, and she came two weeks after Harvey. Remember that big flooding in Houston? And Joel Olstein wouldn't let folks sleep on his church floor? Remember all that? That was Harvey, and then all of a sudden we get the Harvey Weinstein thing. And then we kept having these Harvey rituals for so long. I still don't know what that means. I don't know why Harvey was the name. I don't know why it was chosen. I don't know why everybody kept speaking it out of their lips or what it means. Okay? But I know that these two hurricanes were the breaking of the water for the Revelation 12 sign. Because you can't have a woman waiting to deliver a man-child unless the water breaks. Harvey was two weeks before this, right at the time of the um, eclipse, okay? Right after it, I believe. And then all of a sudden, this one comes. Breaking of the water. Breaking of the water. We have the United States flooded. We have all those islands out there flooded. Let me read you a little bit here from Wikipedia concerning the facts on it. Just, just a quick fact sheet. Hurricane Irma. The highest winds were 180 miles per hour. The lowest pressure was 914 M-bar. The overall effects, fatalities, were 52 direct hits dead immediately from this thing. And then 82 indirect, which gave us a total of 134 deaths that they know of that happened from Irma. The damage was $77.2 billion back in 2017 USD. The areas affected were Cape Verde. That, that's where it started. That's where it originated. Uh, the Leeward Islands, especially Barbuda, Bar, Barbuda, St. Bethany, it goes through the list of the islands there. Okay, They had never had a hurricane in that area. And here comes Irma. God's saying, things are changing, folks. You better recognize the change in things. And what was the change? Well, God places it right here in this code. Let's look at it. Nibiru. It looks so beautiful right there, too. Going through that blue verse, Nibiru is what caused all of this and why it was in the location it was. And Nibiru was the breaking of the water for Jupiter less than a month later. Nibiru brought in Harvey and Nibiru brought in Irma. God's judgment system, these two hurricanes were God's judgment. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And they'll never say, and turn from their wicked ways. America hadn't turned from its wicked ways, and Houston was wiped out with Harvey. And then along comes Irma. Let's see what it says. Let's continue on. Psalm 65, 7 and 8. The roaring of the seas. God's judgment. He's warning America, what's a coming? The roaring of the seas will do, be your undoing, will be your wipage, will be your catastrophe, a catastrophic event, and the tumult of the peoples so that they dwell in the uttermost parts. They all stand in awe of all your signs, Lord. And these islands are the uttermost parts. Nobody had ever seen it before. And now there's a change that has taken place. Here comes Irma. Hurricane Irma. And here's what it says. These are, these are the axes, are, are the terms in this code. 
Hurricane Irma, it is prophesied by name. God calls her name Irma. Right here. Hurricane Irma. She's prophesied by name. It's coming to the U.S. as well because of Nibiru. That's big fat all the way over there to the left. Beautiful skippage coming down on a row skip. It's awesome. Hurricane Irma is prophesied by name. Prophesied nation. USA. Respect his signs and wonders. Coming in a lul. And it happened in a lul. Guys? The sign, the Revelation 12 sign, happened in Tishri. It was the first day of Tishri on the old calendar. That's the only calendar we had seven years ago. But we were praying about it. We said, Lord, get us in the right time, the right mindset, the right everything. We want to only be with you. That should be our heart. That was the message this morning. Lord, I don't want anything of me, anything of my desires. I, give me a hatred for everything in this world and only a love for you. Boom. Respect the signs and wonders. And God says, this happened in a lul. Now, remember, this was in heaven. This was recorded in heaven. Ezekiel saw that this hurricane was going to happen in the USA in, in a lul. It didn't mean anything to him. John saw that it was going to happen in the USA in a lul brought on by Nibiru. It meant a little something to him because he remembers that three-hour eclipse. He was standing in the middle of it with Jesus. Where were you when Kennedy was shot? Most people remember. Old man Bush didn't. He was in charge of the CIA and couldn't remember where he was when Kennedy was shot. Well, he was right there watching it happen with his foot leaned against the building. Somebody took a picture of him being there that day. And he couldn't remember where, where he was. Do you remember where you were when Reagan was shot? Do you remember where you were when Columbia blew up out of the sky? John remembers where he was during that three-hour eclipse and knew what brought it on. You guys know during that 40 days from the time Jesus resurrected and he was glorified and he came back and he walked the earth glorified for 40 days that a lot of the questions were answered that you and I didn't have until now. His private conversations with those people, all the followers, no unbelievers saw the resurrected Jesus. Only followers, only believers saw the resurrected Jesus. And he expounded to them much of our Bible code, gave them answers concerning the future dates, gave them answers concerning what that what was that three-hour eclipse that just happened. That was in a Nibiru. That's a judgment system. It came around for, you know, and he told the story. And here we have it right here, God sharing it with us. Ask the question, God will answer it. What does Psalm 9, 20 to 10, 1 say? Oh, put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but just little bitty men. Selah. Think about that. God brings trouble so man will know he's not in charge of a thing. And that's what the six seal earthquake's all about. Because Obama and all the leaders of the world think they're in charge. Because they're bringing about these storms and these weapons and these hurricanes and whatever it is they're bringing about. And these weapons of war and, and mass destruction and nukes and... Then the six seal earthquake happens and they're like, oh, this is God. This is God doing this. And he lets them know that they're little itty bitty men. And I'm coming for you. And Sean will be announcing, dude, here it comes. Here it comes, guys. Pay attention. And continuing on, it says God's going to bring all these storms because he's going to let little bitty men know that they're little bitty men. Why are you standing afar off, O oh Lord? Why are you hiding yourself from in the times of trouble? Why are you so far away? We're going to be in heaven with him. And men on earth, after the rapture, are going to be crying out to him, and they're not going to hear him for a while. They're going to have to run to Sean and say, hey, what's going on? What's the word from the Lord? And he's not going to be found of them. He said, seek ye me right now. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. That's right now. Very soon you won't be able to do that until he decides he's going to do that again probably after the six seal earthquake, the other judgments start coming and men are going to holler out and cry out to the Lord. Now they're going to be saved. They're going to be able to call out and be saved. But he gave them the word of the Lord. He gave them the Bible code. He gave them everything they need. And they said, nah, that's fine. Well, as soon as the rapture happens and God's so far away, where are you, Lord? Where, where are you? Where's the light? Where's the people? Where's your followers? Where are the saved? Where's the bride of Christ? Where's the body of Christ? Well, they're safe in heaven. Now judgments come your way. Wake up. 
it's time to die. Are you woke up yet? I'm not saying are you woke. I'm saying have you awakened yet to the things of God? Awake, oh sleeper. It's time to die. And so many is going to die during that time. Psalm 95, 5 and 6. Oh, the sea is his. And he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. These people are going to recognize. It's a shame that America didn't recognize it when Harvey come through, that that was the breaking of the water for a sign that would come through. And all these things, Harvey and Irma came during a lul. God says so. And the first day of Tishri was September 23rd, 2017 of the same year. And everybody missed it. And they didn't fall down on their faces. And they didn't worship the Lord. And the pastors didn't get up in their pulpits and cry out. They said, hey, your ship's coming in. Liars, liars. Let's look at another one. This one here is uh, on Irma 2. It says, this is September 7th. 2017, this code appears in 1 Kings 15, 21. This could be a general message about hurricane season, Sean says, but because of the way the codes are layered, it can also contain specific details of a singular event. God bless. Here's the code. All was threatened by hurricane season. We will wail. You will endure the pounding. This is Irma. Irma's up in here, and, and hurricane season's up in here. It's at a skip of 578. 578. All will be threatened by hurricane season. We will wail. You will endure the pounding. And it was 77.2 billion in damages. I think that's what we said, or was it million? I think it was billion. I'll have to look at that number again. Uh, uh, Wikipedia, here it is. 77.2 billion in 2017. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of wailing. That's a lot of houses. Houses crushed, businesses destroyed, lives ruined, hospitals. I mean, it was bad. They cried and wailed, but they didn't call out to the Lord. That's where we are right now. Continuing on here, 1 Kings 16, 13, provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. They said, we will rebuild, we'll build back better, and we'll take the insurance money, and we'll get a bigger house out of the thing. Oh, it worked out better. This, this bad thing worked out good for us. So we're going to build bigger and better houses for ourselves, not lend to the poor, not give, not cry out to the Lord. We'll cry out, but not to the Lord. And the rest of these terms here, the appointed time is a lul. There God saying it again. It all happened in a lul, folks. That was a rough hurricane season. And... Uh, Joel Osteen never even knew it, never need, knew about this Bible code, never knew that the Lord was angry and livid with him and brought that water right to his town and flooded so many folks. And he's going to use the insurance and build back better. The appointed time is a lul, USA, Irma. It came to the gate of the city, Miami. Miami come right through there and ripped it apart. The same are the islands it threatened. Catastrophic destruction of wealth written in the books by name. God's got it all recorded, guys. He had it recorded before the event happened. Don't you want to know his mind before it happens? That's prophecy. Prophecy. God will not do any judgment until he first gives prophecy to his prophets. And his prophets can declare the prophecies. That's why we do this Bible study every night. So you'll know what's headed here next. We're going to get raptured. And then Sean will be here calling out the prophecies. Here's what's a coming. Get ready. You better repent. You better turn to Jesus. You better believe. Amen. Amen, guys. That's enough for tonight. I love you. Why don't we pray and go? God has it all. The end from the beginning to his glory, for his glory. Stay away from the fake rock and follow the true rock because their rock is nothing close to our rock. We have Jesus. Jesus is the rock. And they're trusting on man's rock. Peter, the first pope, who was, Peter was never the first pope. That's the major, massive lie about the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church will send you straight to hell, folks. You come out of her and you believe the Bible. If you would just read the Ten Commandments out of 
the original text and not your Catholic Bible, you'd know that God hates idols. He hates you bowing down to concrete. He hates it with a passion. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. And that's why God's coming for America because they call themselves Christian and they say Jesus and Mary and God and Christmas and it's all idol worship. It has nothing to do with the Bible. These people are religious and don't know a thing about the Bible. Do you know anything about the Bible? Because God is going to use the Bible as his judgment book. And he also use it, uses it as his protection book. We hide up under the wing of his scriptures so we may be protected in the time of trouble. Because he tells us beforehand what's happening. We want you to know we don't want anybody to perish in hell. We don't want anybody to get hurt. You got to come out of your Catholicism. You got to come out of your wickedness. You got to come out of your paganism. You got to come out of all the stuff that opposes God in his scripture and believe his word. Come out of the fake rock. Get away from the fake rock unto the real rock, the true rock. Jesus Christ is that rock. Amen. Believe. We're about to get raptured here soon. I appreciate all of you. I love you coming aboard every evening. Let's do it again tomorrow night by God's grace. Let's pray. Papa, we love you so much. Thank you for loving us and giving us your word. And a much more sure word is your word. And we believe your word. And may your word be our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, everything about who we are. May it be all you. And I pray for anybody listening to my voice right now who is not 100% sure that they're saved, that they're going to go to heaven. And I pray you'll solidify that in their hearts, Lord, through belief in your finished work. You are such a good God. You paid the price in full. And may this person believe, believe, believe in your death, burial, and resurrection. Believe that you paid the price in full with your blood. Believe that they need to believe to be saved. And may they be saved. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you, love you, love you. Catherine says, Amen. Evelyn says, Believe, believe, believe. His death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, guys. Love you dearly. I love these Bible codes. Brother George says, Amen. Catherine, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Pastor and Sean. Amen, guys. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, says Evelyn. Amen, says Lila. Amen, says Adrienne. Hallelujah. I love y'all, Jenny. Amen. Amen. I love you guys by His grace. We'll see you tomorrow night. Amen.